Hello, I'm Thomas Hazlitt, and welcome to my home here in Portland, Oregon. This is the location where I've created all of my courses for Linux Academy, including AWS Concepts, AWS Essentials, and AWS Certified Solutions Architect Associate. That includes things that I've created like Project Omega and also the Orion Papers. So the team came here to record me in my home environment to get a good sense of what it's like in the day of a course author here at Linux Academy. Let's see how my daily workflow goes. No place I can <laughs> So how does my day start? That's a good question. Well, for me, since I'm on the West Coast, it starts very early. Half of my team is currently on the East Coast, so by 6 a.m. Pacific time, it's already 9 a.m. on the East Coast. So to keep in tow with my team members on the East Coast, as well as those in Texas in Central Time, I'm generally up by about 5.30, 5.45, sitting at my desk right here by about 6 a.m., and that's when I start my day. Now, when I actually start my day, I try to ease into it. And what I mean by that is I go right into my kitchen over here, I get a cup of coffee. So once I grab my coffee, I come in, I sit back here at my desk, and generally the first thing that I do is I go through community support tickets. So all of you as students have the ability to post questions in our community to our instructors, such as myself, and we'll go through and answer them for you. So a lot of times I'll spend the first 30 minutes to 45 minutes of my day answering those particular questions or congratulating you on the achievements that you have achieved through taking our courses or passing any certification exams. <laughs> what does a successful day look like? That is a difficult question to answer because every day is different. There can be days where I am working on a course and when I work on a course, there's so many different aspects that go into it. You just don't sit down and hit the record button. You have so many things that you have to go through and plan to even get to the point where you hit record. And then even once you hit record, there are so many things that can go wrong during the recording process. It's, it's certainly Murphy's Law. If it can go wrong, it will go wrong. Okay, so this is what will just drive me nuts. And I mean, lose it. So you can be recording, but if you don't set your recording settings correctly, well, then a lot of things can go wrong. So here's what can happen. You can set when you record to record from either your computer's microphone or the podcasting microphone that we have, or you can set it to record from one screen or another screen. And as you'll see, I have a multi-monitor setup. So if you have one of those set incorrectly, you can record a full 25, 30 minute video, then only to realize at the end that everything you just did is completely wasted. Oh, and there's one more thing. There is a slight possibility that after you're done recording, that instead of hitting save, it can actually be deleted before you actually are able to save it and go in and edit it. Um, that doesn't happen often. Maybe it's only happened to me once in the past year and a half, but it has happened where I've recorded, I've hit stop record, and then instead of clicking save, I've accidentally hit delete. And that is when I want to jump out of the window. <laughs> so what I want to do now is show you guys my workstation back here and all the cool gadgets and things that I work with every single day. All right, now that we're here in my workstation, I want to show you guys around a little bit some of the cool stuff that I have here that, you know, not only that I work on, but that I also have for fun. So come on and take a look down here first and I'll kind of give you a tour of what's going on over here. So if any of you use these or not, these are Raspberry Pis. So this is one that I have a spare one right now that I use to kind of play around with and hack with a bit. And this actually I have a Pi hole running, which is my own DNS server, which does network level ad blocking, which is really cool. If nobody's ever heard of Pi hole, I highly suggest you guys look that up and go ahead and buy one. Um, as mentioned a few times on the uh, Cloud Assessments podcast, this has now become famous. This is my Texas Instruments graphing calculator that I got at a Goodwill for $3.99. Also down here, uh, I have a lot of fun with these here. I'm you know, a child of the 80s, I love classic gaming, so I have an N64 and a, an, a Super Nintendo console that uh, I love to play and have friends over and play with those as well. as well. It's a good time. And then also for some modern gaming as well, Nintendo Switch. You gotta get your Zelda on. Zelda Breath of the Wild, great game, love to play it. Also for all the trips that I take to Texas, to our office down in Keller, this is a must for being on the plane. 
Absolutely. And also my beast of a router here, my uh, Asus router, um, which uh, allows me to take full advantage of my gigabit fiber internet. So a thousand up, a thousand down. Um, I'm very blessed to be in a location where I get that type of upload and download speed. Um, so kind of swing around here, we can actually take a look at the battle station here. This is my multi-monitor setup. I love this setup here. Got my Mac laptop here, uh, Mac Pro Retina 2015 model. Um, and then I have two 24 inch monitors here, 1080p, as well as a 21 inch 1080p monitor up here. So they got webcam up here for recording. And then obviously this is my Rode Podcaster, which I use to record all the videos. So. When you hear me record, this is what I'm recording on right here. And a lot of times I record right on this screen here. So I'll be looking right at this screen. I'll have the microphone right here and I will say hello and welcome back. In this video, we're going to learn about VPCs. And that's kind of how it goes. That's my workstation. That's my process. And this is where it all happens. I'm going to take you over to the bar. So at the end of a long day, after I've worked and maybe I want to play a few games and relax a little bit. I walk over to my barber here and pour myself a little bit of whiskey. All right, so now that the day is over, let's have a drink together. So as you know from some of my other videos, I'm a big whiskey fan. So currently this is what I have in stock. Well, obviously there's the BQ12, there's Kettle One, this is just vodka that I have on hand, then also some Knob Creek. So I have two glasses here because we're going to pour a little Knob Creek and we're going to pour a little Habiki as well. So for Knob Creek, and this is just a straight uh, Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey. And with this, I'll generally pour it over a little bit of ice. And again, Knob Creek, it's, it's a very, very good uh, straight uh, Kentucky bourbon. Let's give it a taste. That's really nice. Now. The second glass here is for the Habiki 12. Now the Habiki 12 has been discontinued, so it's no longer made. And this is one of the last bottles that you could buy here in the United States. So this is kind of my pride and joy. I drink it very, very rarely, but I'm going to pour a little bit for all of us here. Just a splash. This has to last a long time because it doesn't exist anymore. We'll never put this over ice. I don't want to ruin this. This is the good stuff. Oh, that's just so, that's too good. That's too good. So yeah, after a long day of recording, where hopefully everything has gone well, there's been no issues, I can sip over here, I can have a nice drink and relax for the rest of the evening, and then hop back over to my station over there, play some games, whatever I want to do, and enjoy myself. So, but for now, actually what we're gonna do is, let's head out and hit the neighborhood a little bit. There's no place I can see 